welcome to Adventures in Alchemy, a podcast filled with witchy tips and true stories to inspire your magical life. I am Michelle Martin Dobbins, the creator of Daily Alchemy and the Adventures in Alchemy podcast. This podcast is supported by the Daily Alchemy Premium Members Lab. I don't run a Patreon, so I keep membership at a very economical 11 11 a month. For that, you not only help sponsor this podcast, but you will receive access to 14 alchemy courses, and we add a new course each quarter, access to Reiki Level 1, 2, and Master's training and distance attunements, plus a library of audio distance Reiki healings, monthly alchemical experiments, PDFs of all my books and planners, and 15% off of everything else I sell. Also, there's a members-only Facebook group so we can chat amongst ourselves in a private community. So when you join, I do ask that you commit to three months since you are able to access and download all of the content immediately. It's $33.33 for the first three months and then $11.11 every month after. I am so grateful to all the premium members who support my work and I'd love to have you as a premium member too if you're not already one. You can go to DAPM Lab, that stands for Daily Alchemy Premium Members Lab, DAPMLab.com to check it out, or there'll be a link in the show notes. Now, on with the show, and may it be a blessing to all who listen. I am very excited today because I have a special guest, Sebastian Soul. He is a spiritual coach who believes in the law of attraction. And after a lifelong struggle with depression and severe trauma from two heart surgeries, he embarked on a journey of emotional healing. And this journey allowed him to discover the power of affirmations, manifestation, and the universe. And his purpose is to share his experiences with people from all around the world on the Affirmation to Manifestation podcast. So I'm really excited to have you here, Sebastian. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to learning more about your story because it sounds like you've been on quite a journey. So maybe we can just start with when did you start to believe in the power of manifestation and law of attraction? When did that first come into play for you in your life? Were you a child or is that later as an adult? Oh, that was so many years later. When it comes to my journey and manifestation, from a very young age, let's say it like this, I always knew that there was more to it. I always knew there was more than just this physical world. However, because I was so much in suffering for so many years, either physical suffering from heart surgeries or also emotional suffering from trauma that I had with these heart surgeries or just, let's say, in general depression that I was suffering from, I always had this feeling that there was more but I never allowed myself to access the spiritual side because whenever somebody told me about spirituality, about manifestation, I just thought, oh, that's so weird. Come on. Life is just suffering. Life sucks. Uh, I was just in such a negative energy that, yeah, that it was impossible for me to be receptive to the message of the law of attraction, to the messages from the universe that the universe also sent me. But because my vibration was so, so low, I couldn't see what was so, so obvious. But then eventually there was, let's say, one specific experience and also a couple of minor experiences that then led me on this path to say, hey, there must be more. And then everything fell into place. Mm, Cool. Can you share a little bit about the experience that led you to believe that there was something more? One of the main experiences, or let's say the most profound experiences, was when I had hit rock bottom. And I think that's pretty, let's say, pretty common from a lot of people who have these kind of awakening moments where they hit rock bottom and they say, okay, now it's time to let go. And I still remember that I was living in Thailand and Bangkok. And back then I had so many health issues because of the pollution. I mean, at least on the surface, it was only because of the pollution, but it was also now I know it because of a lot of unresolved trauma, unresolved issues that I still had inside of me. And I was just so so sick of the suffering. I mean, I had just come out of a relationship that I basically destroyed with my negative emotions. And then I had this problem that I had ear infections, eye infections, everything was basically infected. My whole sinuses were infected because of the pollution. And I still remember this one night where 
I couldn't sleep. I was so angry. And at some point, I just, I think I was just screaming or maybe even just screaming inside. I think it was more inside. And I was like, God, why am I here? Why do I have to go through this suffering? Why, why, why? And at some point, I was at such an emotional low that I said, okay, I give up. I give in. I let go, no matter what. No matter what happens, even if I jump now out of the window, no matter what happens. And I was already standing on the balcony on the 21st floor. I still don't think that I actually wanted to jump. It was just like this this feeling of being outside there and that I could do it, that you have this last resort, basically. And then it hit me for some reason. I still remember it, that I had this overwhelming feeling of peace. Like suddenly there was peace. And in the weeks, month, or I guess even years before, I never really felt this peace. And I felt this peaceful feeling of, it's okay, let go, just let go. And yeah, then I just had this profound experience of letting go and of, it's really hard to describe it, but it's some kind of unconditional love that that makes you feel protected. Like just a couple of minutes or even seconds before this experience, I felt like that the whole world was against me. And then suddenly I had this internal feeling of, yeah, it's okay. I'm protected. The universe takes care of me. Even if I'm suffering right now, this is my path of least resistance. I know that I have to go through this path. And yeah, that was one of the most, or if not the most profound experiences that I had. Wow. It kind of reminds me, and I don't even remember the story in detail, but Eckhart Tolle, and I'm probably mispronouncing his name, that wrote The Power of Now, I believe he talks about kind of coming to one of that type of experience where everything is so bad and you're so just in misery that you just kind of let go. And I guess you think that's the turning point when you can like allow that grace in, when you give up and let go? I think it was for me. I mean, I would really say if you don't have to go through this struggle, then you don't have to do it, basically. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's this crazy thing that I'm the kind of person, and in Germany we have this saying that my family members always use for me. I'm always the kind of person I own, I only learn when I bump my head against the wall a hundred times and then when it's a hundred times and my whole head is basically in pain, then at some point <laughs> I learn it. That's my biggest problem. And I still have that a little bit up to this day. It got less and less and less. I mean, if I look back to the person that I was a couple of years ago or even a couple of months ago, I don't even see that person anymore. It's like I look at it and I'm like, what? That was me? Nah, come on. That can't be me because I'm so different now. But it's interesting what you said about Eckhart Tolle, because he also, yeah, he also described in his book, The Power of Now, when he had this moment of, okay, it's so much suffering, I let go. And I never really thought about that it's so similar to his experience. But I think he also sat on a park bench then for a couple of years. That's something that I didn't do afterwards. Yeah, I remember reading that and I was like, "Mm, well, I knew I would never have that experience because I have all these, I have four kids, so... I would never be free to sit on a park. You can't just go like, hey, okay, bye-bye. I'm going to sit on the bench for five years. Yes, <laughs> Take care but, of yourself. <laughs> but yeah, I guess everybody has their own path to follow. So, I mean, the first experience that I actually had with this, let's say, divine energy. And up to this day, it's really weird how I say this. I still don't know if it was the drugs, and I don't mean some, let's say, heroin or something. I mean the drugs that they gave me in the hospital or if it really was some kind of out-of-body experience. Because I still remember in the second heart surgery that I had, I was 13, and I still remember this one night where I had so much pain afterwards, like so, so much pain. It was right after the surgery. And I was just drifting in and out of sleep all the time. And then I had this experience where I was just floating somehow to a gate, and everything was just so, so peaceful. And the one crazy thing that happened then That was something that I also experienced even before I got into manifestation and into affirmations and into the law of attraction was that I'm no longer afraid of death. Like I, for example, right now, since basically this experience, since I was 13, I was no longer afraid to die. Wow. That's very powerful, I think, because I think that's one of the things that holds a lot of people back. So tell me just like a little bit more about your story, because it sounds so interesting, because I know that you're from... Germany, when you said you were in Thailand, was it? Mm-hmm, yeah. When you had reckoning, and then where are you now? And now I'm living in Romania. 
California. So you've kind of traveled a lot in your life, it seems, and you've also had a lot of uh, health issues that you've dealt with. So do you want to share a little bit about kind of just your your story? And Yeah, I traveled a lot. And you're right, I had a lot of health issues. I actually ended up in Bangkok, I ended up working as a university teacher. I was teaching business um, at a university there. And I was there, let's say, one of the most painful, also good. And I mean, in the end, like those painful experiences are always the good ones because they help you to grow. One of these experiences was that I was in a relationship. I don't want to reveal too much because I want to protect her privacy. But let's say my old trauma and her old trauma, that was an explosive explosion, basically an explosive <laughs> explosion. And... Then I was living on my own there in Bangkok and I actually wanted to stay in Bangkok. I wanted to stay in Thailand. I wanted to live there. I loved my job. I really loved, yeah, I loved working there. I really loved doing this. I also had an online business on the side and life was good. But then, at least after this relationship experience, let's say it like this, but then I had one health issue of an, after another. And I still believe that up to this day, it was because the universe showed me uh, uh, you just had this traumatic experience that you are, let's say, 90% responsible for. Why don't you work on your trauma? Why don't you work on yourself? And that's also something that I think is, in some cases, these painful experiences might be your path of least resistance. And in this situation, I was just so blind to it. I was like, nah, I don't have any trauma. Come on, no, who are you kidding me? I made fun of basically everyone who told me, that they are seeing a therapist. And the funny thing is now, in hindsight, I can say it's so interesting how the universe then allowed me to actually meet people who have done therapy or people who work as therapists. <laughs> and I still didn't work on myself. I still said, like, nah, it's whatever. For example, I met one guy in Bangkok who's still a close friend of mine who is a retired therapist <laughs> and I still didn't do anything I still was like oh, no because back then I didn't see the signs I just didn't and then when it came to this low point or let's say right after this experience that I just shared with you right after this experience where I had this okay I let go that's when I actually started to listen to the universe and how I ended up in Romania is a really funny story <laughs> because I don't know anyone in Romania I've never been to Romania before I hadn't had any Romanian friend, nothing. Like I knew nothing about this country. And then one night I woke up at four o'clock in the night with this idea, Romania. And I was like, huh? That's kind of strange. Why do I think about Romania now? I've never, ever thought about Romania ever in my whole life. <laughs> and then I did some research and it was really funny then I found out that the business conditions for foreigners, especially for European foreigners, are really amazing in Romania. And I was like, okay, hmm, maybe that's a sign. And then I contacted a friend of mine who does tax consulting for Germans, basically, for Germans, Austrians, every, all German speakers. And then I asked him, hey, do you know anything about Romania? And he told me, yeah, I know this guy who has his business in Romania. Maybe he can help you. And I kid you not. Within 20, no, sorry, within 48 hours, I met this guy because as a coincidence, this guy was in Bangkok and he left Bangkok <laughs> one day later. And I still have his accountant and his lawyer now. It's just, it's the craziest thing ever. Sometimes when I think back to that, I still don't believe it. It's like, come on. It's just so weird. And yeah, that's how I ended up in Romania, basically. <laughs> That's cool. It's amazing how those synchronicities start opening up for us. Totally, we, uh, totally. Trusting the universe. One thing I always like to ask people about, I'm a big believer in like having a daily practice or just, you know, a practice that you do most of the time and mind changes up and sometimes it's not always daily, but I'm just curious as to what kind of practices do you do around law of attraction or to manifest things? Do you have something you do daily or do you just do something when you're wanting to manifest a particular thing? I actually have something that I do twice a day. Like I'm very German, very strict about it, about my daily, <laughs> my daily routine. Yeah, the stereotype is true. Um, the one thing I do every morning and every evening before I go to bed, or let's say when I, after I wake up and before I go to bed is a meditation. 
I have a certain meditation, a guided meditation. I use one in the morning from Joe Dispenza. I don't know if you've heard of him. Oh, yeah. But he's very big on this subject and he's one morning meditation. It's just so, so good. And it gets you started in the day. It reminds you basically of the things you want to achieve and also at the same time, what things you might not want to do. Like if you want to, for example, get some work done that you don't watch Netflix all day, just as an example. And then I have my own manifestation process where I have certain affirmations that I have for myself. Basically, some are health related, some are money related, some are relationship related. And what I do, and that might sound a little bit strange, and it's not really what other, let's say, spiritual gurus do or something, but I listen to music and most of the time music that is related to the subject that I want to manifest. To give you an example, when I want to manifest money, in the morning, I listen to a song that's called Law for Money, and it's a hip-hop song. <laughs> it's like kind of, I don't know if it's gangster rap or it's just hip-hop, where they basically sing all the time, I got the law for money. And this puts you in this vibration of, yes, I love money, I appreciate it. And if I then go to the relationship part, then I, for example, listen often to Spanish music. For example, this one song, which is called Me Voy en Amorando, I'm Falling in Love. So that puts you then in the mind of, yeah, of relationship, of love. And I believe that once you are in this vibration, once you vibrate on this level, once you put yourself there, then it's easy to manifest these things. Mm, that's nice. I am a big believer in the power of music too. It's like, uh, I think there's a saying, like, if you sing your prayers, it's like praying twice or something. I think that when we listen to music or when we sing or we put our affirmations in like a little chant, it just kind of amps up that vibration. So that's Yeah, I think it's important for when you think about the emotional part. I truly believe that when it comes to affirmations, you have to feel them. It's not so much about what you say, because I can say all day, I'm rich and wealthy, I'm rich and wealthy, I'm rich and wealthy. Or I have a beautiful girlfriend. I have a wonderful relationship. And if you don't have any emotions, which is very, very difficult for Germans to show their emotions, actually, but if you don't have any emotions with it, then you won't manifest it. And that's why it's so important that you actually feel these things. I believe it's all about the emotions. I really believe that the affirmations that you have are just basically, yeah, a little bit like when children learn to ride a bicycle. Those are the supporting wheels. But when it comes to manifesting the things that you want, then you have to feel it. You have to vibrate it. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. Well, we haven't mentioned the coronavirus yet, but I don't want to talk about it the whole time because I think everybody's tired of hearing about it a lot. <laughs> but since it is such a big thing in the forefront of our minds, I'm just curious, do you have practices that you use or that you recommend to people that kind of keep the anxiety at bay around? Mm -hmm. Yes, I have a logical practice and a spiritual practice. And the logical practice is the first tip that I have. Avoid looking at the news all the time because the media is also designed in a way to make you scared. I mean, not just in a way. I think their whole, their whole ideology is how can we make people scared the most? It's all about fear mongering. To give you an example, because my family is still living in Germany and I'm in Romania, and Germany got hit really, really hard by the virus. I mean, the USA now too, but at the beginning, Germany was really, really high. And then I saw this article and this article said like something, I don't know the exact number anymore, something with like 2% death. Like when you read it, or 5% death or whatever it might be. And then when you read it, you think to yourself, oh my God, terrible. But when you then read the article and you really look at the data, and you see that it was just, or not just, I mean, I don't want to downplay it, but when you see that 15% of the people who die are over the age of 80 and have preconditions that basically, yeah, if you want to say it like that, that basically make it very likely that they would have died in the next couple of months or two, three years anyway. And then you have a look at the statistic in your age, even maybe when it's after 50 or before 50, and suddenly the number is like zero point something. But because the media always uses these shock numbers, these shock things. I mean, when you think about it, of course, the coronavirus, I believe, is more dangerous than the flu. But if you would publish an article in a newspaper, this year, 9,500 deaths from the flu, 
everyone would go crazy because of the flu. And a lot of people die from the flu. But because the media doesn't talk about it, nobody gives a beep. <laughs> nobody really cares. Yeah. So I would really say tone down a little bit when it comes to the media. I follow this principle. I only listen and watch the local news so that I know what do I have to do in my city? What do I have to know in my city? And I know it's so tempting to watch the news all the time or to look at news articles. But let's face it. If you live in a certain country right now, in a certain area of the country, I mean, for example, the USA, it's a huge country. You should only focus right now on what impacts you directly, what rules you should follow, what rules you have to follow. And otherwise, I would say, just let it be. You don't want to torture your brain with the suffering of the whole world. It's just too much. It's too much to take it. Yeah. And then I would also say, in a spiritual practice, what I do, I actually wrote down affirmations that I'm thankful for this coronavirus. And I know it sounds a little bit weird and I don't want to downplay it. I'm not thankful for people dying or people suffering, not at all. I mean, I'm in the risk group. I'm very well aware of that. Like I have a pretty high chance to die if I get it. But at the same time, I say to myself, okay, there are new business opportunities. It's a new awakening for people. People will finally awaken in the sense of, hey, maybe I should not just have a nine to five and then watch Netflix all day. Maybe there's more to life. Maybe I think about my past where I didn't do things that I actually wanted to do because now I'm actually aware of these things because now I can't do them. Often we take these things so for granted. For example, maybe there was a job that you always wanted to do in the past, but you never allowed yourself to do it. And now you're faced with a situation you can't really do anything. And now you realize, hey, I shouldn't have taken this time for granted. So I think there can be positive aspects of this whole thing. I try to see the positive, let's say it like this. Yeah, I think that's great advice. I agree with you. And somehow in this, the way the world is now, sometimes we, like you say, obviously, just because we look at the positive doesn't mean that we don't feel for the people who are affected by the negative and see that. But we have to you know, the more we can focus on the positive, then the more I think positive outcomes that we can create out of it. And when you're in a situation, I think sometimes that's just the the best that you can do. Because when we get into that thought of like feeling shame or any of these lower vibration emotions around what's going on, then we get stuck. Yeah. And I actually had this experience that I wouldn't say criticize me for it, but somebody said like, hey, why are you so happy? I mean, hey, we, we live in these times right now. And I just said to him, I said, what benefit does it have if I'm actually sad with other people? And at the same time, what benefit does it have for other people if I'm sad? Because then I make them even sadder with my vibration. It's a little bit comparable to people who feel ashamed or let's say not ashamed, but who judge people who are rich and at the same time they want to manifest money. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, for sure. It's a tricky thing. It's one of these things that we deal with in spiritual practice where we have to kind of look beyond what we would normally do because what we would normally do and what society tells us to do doesn't really work. It just keeps us stuck in the same place. So we have to shift the way we look at things and change our perspective. And I guess now is a good time to do that because stakes are really high in the world for everyone and maybe not as high as they say they are for everybody, but you know, good time to change. <laughs> so can you share some of the results that you've had from things that you've wanted to manifest that you've actually been doing the work and saying the affirmations for? Oh yes. I can tell you so many stories about that. When it comes to my manifestation success, it's like, I mean, of course, I'm still learning. I'm just doing this basically now since a couple of months actively, but I had such a huge breakthroughs. To give you one example, with my other businesses, my online businesses, I was always struggling. I never really had any great ideas, any amazing ideas. There was this time when, even when I was living in Thailand, I was like barely getting by. I was making a little bit over $1,000. Of course, when I then was working for the university and I had this $1,000 on the side, it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. So I was at this point where I got into affirmation to manifestation. That was after this breakdown that I had, that I just shared with you. 
I was then at this place where things were just coming to me, things that I wanted to learn about. For example, suddenly YouTube recommended Abraham Hicks to me, which basically was one of the biggest inspirations for me to start my Affirmation to Manifestation podcast. And I've never really searched for anything spiritual, but for some reason, the universe said, okay, this is on your recommended list. And I'm like, huh, what is Abraham Hicks? Then I looked at it. And by that, I mean, back then I was actually right before flying back to Germany from Bangkok. And I was again, sick, <laughs> completely sick in a hotel bed. And I had to actually postpone my flight because of my sickness. I mean, you can't fly 12 hours if your sinuses are infected, otherwise your eardrum can burst. So I didn't want to do that. But again, this was somehow my path of least resistance, even though you could say there was a lot of resistance. But for me, that was the time when I then stumbled upon Abraham Hicks. And I think if I would have taken the flight before, I might have not discovered Abraham Hicks. So then I watched the first video and I was like, oh, that sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty nice. Okay. Then I Googled it and I was like, yeah, come on, channeling, yeah, BS. That did, no, no, no. That doesn't work. And then for some reason, I kept on watching. I still don't know why. But I was just spending my time in this hotel and I was just watching all day. I mean, I couldn't do anything. I was just sick. The only thing I got was room service and that's it. And I was just watching that stuff and I was just consuming it. And I was then writing my own affirmations, my own manifestations. And by then I had already met a life coach in Bangkok. I knew him from before, but I never really took any of his advice series, let's say like this, because he's also a very spiritual guy. And I then called him and I was like, hey, I discovered this Abraham Hicks stuff. What do you think about this? Uh, I think it's completely crazy, but for some reason I'm watching it. And he was like, yeah, um, I've heard of it. And he actually had then a phone conversation with me, a phone session. And I just had this thing like, hey, okay, I want to double my income. <laughs> I can do this. I can double my income. And he, then I told him the number that I want. And he just said to me, and I will never forget that. Okay, now double this again. And I was like, what? Are you freaking crazy? What's wrong with you? I could never achieve that ever, ever. And he's like, yes, you can. I know that you can. I saw this power in you. I know that you can. And for some stupid reason, or let's not call it stupid, let's say thankful reason, I believed him. I just believed him. I didn't believe that I can do it. But if he says that I can do it, I was like, okay, I mean, this guy is working as a life coach. He's highly successful. I can do it. And later I actually made my life coach certificate with him, which is also a funny story. But yes, I then said, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to write this number down and I'm going to have my affirmations with it. And I'm just going to believe it and then I work on it and it's okay. And the crazy thing that happened is in a couple of months or basically a couple of weeks, I achieved this goal, wow. which was so far, far away before. And the craziest thing, and this is something that almost nobody, let's say nobody who doesn't know about spirituality believes me, my traffic sources on the web maybe increased by 5 to 10%, maybe, not more but my income more than tripled. And this is just something that I still to this day, my logical German mind still wants to say there must be something, eh, 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 something is wrong there. But that's, that's how it is. That's how it happened. And I still can't really explain it in any logical way. But ever since then, I'm successful in my business. I'm successful with, yeah, with all the things that I do. Even now in the Corona time, even though, yeah, that's actually another experience that I had. I had this experience because then the first week during the coronavirus outbreak, especially when the whole thing happened with the USA, when the stock market went down, I could really see it in sales and every business. I was like, okay, everything's going down. Oh, damn it. Now everything that I manifested is gone. And I had this experience where I was lying on the couch in the evening, completely, you could say, completely exhausted from putting in the work, from thinking logically, how can I save this? How can I improve my income? Oh, my God. And I was just lying there completely defeated and going, I refuse to be poor. I refuse to be poor. I refuse to be poor. I just, I don't know. I just said this as a mantra, even though it's actually a negative way of saying it. But for me, it somehow worked. And the next day, I woke up with an idea that now resulted actually in extra income. and. I still don't know the end of the month, but right now it looks very, very good. 
Wow, that's cool. I don't know if you're familiar with the Unity Church, which is like a practical school of Christianity. And Myrtle Fillmore, she was one of the founders of that. And she is a big believer in not only affirmations, because a lot of people in the law of attraction will say affirmations always has to be positive, but she was a big believer in denials as well. And she did some really cool things. She and her husband, both Charles Fillmore, but she healed herself of tuberculosis in the late 1800s when that didn't usually happen. And one of the things that she would say is, as a child of God, I do not inherit illness, which people would say, that's negative. That's not an affirmation. And she would say, it's not, it's not an affirmation. It's a denial and that you needed both. And I'm kind of a big fan too of, you know, we have to have like the yin and the yang, the positive and the negative, but we use it to our own advantage. That's really interesting. I've never heard of that. I mean, I just had a conversation with somebody who beat cancer. And that was an interesting conversation because he said he was also very, always very spiritual. And he said to me, yeah, but how can I make my affirmation? If I say I don't have cancer anymore, it's negative. If I say I'm cancer free, the word cancer is still in there. And I really believe it's more about, yeah, but the emotions again. If you, for example, let's say you beat cancer and it makes you so, so happy when you say I have no cancer anymore, like the feeling that you have is like, yes, that's amazing. I don't have cancer anymore. It's whoa. If that you have this feeling, this positive one, then I think it works because then again, we are in this, let's say in this element where you vibrate this positive energy and you can attract positive things in your life. Yeah, I would agree too. It, it has much more to do with the vibration than the actual words. And I think people sometimes scare themselves by trying to make sure that the wording on the affirmation or whatever they're doing is perfect instead of just going for it and doing what feels right for them. Exactly. To give you another example there, all spiritual teachers always say you should say, I am, I do, I have, like in the present tense. But I'm also a big fan of past tense affirmations. For example, if you want to attract a relationship, why not say, I'm so happy and grateful that we spent this amazing holiday in whatever country in the past, basically, so that you manifest your partner in a way as if you have this feeling that he's already your partner and you already have shared memories. Yeah, that is actually sort of what I did when I um, manifested meeting my husband and we've been together for a long time. But at the time when I was hoping to be in this relationship, I decided to pretend that I was already in the relationship and that my partner was just, they were traveling at a remote place. And of course we've been married for 22 years. So this is almost 25 years ago. So that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's actually really good. I think I'm going to write that down. Like with traveling at a remote place, like they will soon come back yeah, so, from there. So we couldn't, in contact with each other for a few months, but I knew that when he came back, we'd be doing all this cool stuff together, but that I could just feel already I'm in the relationship, even though he's not here right now. And I had a good story to kind of tell myself and I would, yeah, think back on like what you said, the memories of things that we'd already done, even though we hadn't met yet. So it worked out really well for me. <laughs> That's really amazing. No, I, lo I love that really. And you're actually the first person I talked to who also says like, hey, that actually makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm also a big believer that, you know, it may sound weird, but that, you know, time, even though we experience time linearly, that time is really just, you know, not re a real thing, I guess. And so, you know, I do a lot of work with Reiki where we do, we can send Reiki into the past or the future to heal things. And I'll also work with going back and sending affirmations to the past. And, you know, it's really interesting. Some of the results that I've had, like just healing, had healing things happen from a relationship. Like I had a fight with a family member and ever since that happened, like things were just not the same between us. And you just always feel that 
distance, right? That emotional distance. So I decided to like go back in time to the time of that argument and change it. Now, did I really change it? I mean, after I did that, she called me the next day and we had this long chat, like nothing had ever happened. And the argument had been like four or five years back in the past. But I truly believe that even working on things in the past can uh, make changes in the future, even if it didn't actually change the past. So. That's really awesome. That's also a very good success story. Yeah. <laughs> the universe is a magical place. Right? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I wish that I had just realized it sooner. <laughs> That's the one thing. I mean, I don't want to say it's a regret because in the end it led me on an amazing path, but still, if I wouldn't have been so blind to it and so deaf and so, let's say, so ego-possessed of like, nah, everything is negative, everything is bad, that the universe doesn't exist. I think that's a little bit of a, I could say, branding problem of spirituality that a lot of people always think like, yeah, it's those kind of wackos, they're all completely crazy. And I think that's why a lot of people don't really allow themselves to go on this journey. Yeah. So what would you recommend for someone who's just starting on this journey? I think the first recommendation is, or the most important one, is to just be open to those things. Don't just look at something and go, nah, it doesn't work. For example, if I wouldn't have been open to Abraham Hicks to these talks, then I wouldn't have this conversation with you. But when I first had a look at this concept of channeling, and also when I first watched the first video of Abraham Hicks, I thought it's complete bollocks, to be honest. I thought it's complete bollocks. I, I just thought, yeah, that can't be true. But I still kept on going deeper. It's a little bit, you can decide at the beginning of the rabbit hole to say, nope, it's dark in there. I'm going to turn around. Or you can say, hmm, interesting. Let's find out what's in the rabbit hole. And then you go deeper and deeper. So the first tip is really to be open to these concepts because at the beginning, when you've never had any spiritual practice and when you even think, I mean, I was at a point where I thought meditation is for weirdos <laughs> and now I meditate every day two times. So <laughs> it's just realizing that others have gone through this process too. I mean, some people develop this gift of listening to the universe or they develop a spiritual side very early on. I didn't. But just because you didn't develop it early on doesn't mean that you can't develop it. And just because you thought all your life that it's complete bollocks doesn't mean that you will continue to have this belief. It's just this general openness. And then as a second tip, I would say, just see what resonates with you in some way. Because some spiritual practices or some spiritual teachings might resonate with you, others won't. For me, it was really Abraham Hicks. Abraham Hicks resonated with me 100%, even though I was extremely skeptical for a very long time. And then just go into meditation, try it at least maybe two or three minutes, as much as you can do in the beginning, and just calm your mind and just see what this new knowledge does with you. Like, what do you feel about it? When you really ask yourself, what does your inner being feel, not your ego? Your ego will just say, uh, that's horse crap, forget about it, come on, open a beer. But what does your <laughs> inner being really feel? What is this feeling deep inside of you? Is there some resonation? Or when you watch these things or when you listen to things, even when you might listen to this podcast, to my wonderful German accent, when you listen to this, does it actually feel good? Or what emotions do you have? And your emotions are always a very good indicator if you're on the right track. Yeah, I think that's great advice. And I know for myself as well, like, Some of the practices or theories that I've come across sounded really out there at first. And I know a lot of times, like I think, what is his name? Oh, I can't remember. One of the kind of gurus would always say, you have to believe it before you see it. But I think that's a paradox too, because there have been lots of things that I have tried that I thought were like, like one for me is like EFT technique of tapping on different like acupressure points and saying affirmations. And for me, I just felt so silly doing it. And I was like, this is crazy, but I did it and it worked. So yes, it's like when you have this feeling that you think it's weird, but for some reason you want to continue doing it, <laughs> then you're on the right track. Yeah, I guess so. I think maybe it's like that conscious mind is like, 
we've been trained to think these things are so strange. So the conscious mind is kind of going to fight against it, but the unconscious one is pushing us forward to. That's actually a very good way of saying it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's a little bit like this boxing match between your conscious and subconscious mind. Your conscious mind goes like, no, no, I want to get out of there. And then your subconscious mind goes like, no, 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 stick in there. <laughs> That's basically how I see it. Yeah, I think so. What do you think, I guess maybe like your highest aspiration for like law of attraction, things like that to change or heal in the world? Is there something that you would really like to see happen in general? Hmm. Do you mean personal or let's say really, really general in the world? How about both? <laughs> okay, that's. I knew that you're going to say this. <laughs> Why am I asking? <laughs> the universe already told me that you're going to say this. When it comes to, I think it's also somehow correlated when I think about it now. Because a very personal thing that I have is helping people at some stage to use law of attraction manifestation to love themselves more. Because I was dealing with so much self-hate for such a long time. I mean, when I was a teenager, for example, with the scars that I have on my belly, and basically all over my body from the heart surgeries, I was always looking in the mirror and going like, oh, this monster is so ugly. Uh, I was so deep of self-hate. That's why I know how this feels. And if you can use these things to actually heal yourself, I mean, that's just powerful. That's really, really powerful. And the other point, very general, I would say, that's why I'm also so passionate about teaching that now, is that it can just influence all aspects of your life without you actually knowing. That's the crazy thing that happened to me. I mean, I shared this story about how I made more money, but at the same time, even areas where I didn't manifest, or let's say where I didn't actively manifest, let's say like this, I didn't use any affirmations. At the beginning, I only used these many money affirmations because I was like, okay, that's something that you can measure in a data-driven German way. And I can say, if I earn more, then uh, it must work. But other aspects are still a little bit more, let's say not that easily measurable. And at the same time, I had, again, different relationships. I had suddenly relationships, or even if it was just short-term relationships with, with people that were not based on jealousy, not based on insecurity. They were based on honesty suddenly. And I was like, oh, that's a new experience. Like all these kinds of things where different aspects in my life changed. Or also, for example, recently... And I'm still somehow a little bit struggling with it. I had another minor health issue, but just a minor one. And you could say now, oh, yeah, then affirmations don't work. But I see it differently. I see this might be my path of least resistance, or I'm pretty sure. Because if you have a health issue and you actually heal this health issue, this minor one, then, yeah, you won't get the big one. Let's say it like this. To give you a quick example... I've read stories of people who got cancer and they only got it to the last stage because they always ignored all the stop signals. And at some point, the body was so inflammated as or so much resistance there and so much sickness there that at some point they had to go to the doctor. They didn't have any other option anymore because they felt so bad. And then they got this diagnosis and sometimes even terminal diagnosis. But if you listen to your body, if you if you allow yourself to have these, let's say, minor health issues that can then prevent bigger ones, I think that's also a breakthrough. And you can use it in so many different ways. I mean, that's, I think, something that a lot of people misunderstand or purposefully misunderstand. And I would love to hear your opinion on that. But often people who don't believe in spirituality, they think that just that you, because you use an affirmation, you will never be sick, you will never be heartbroken, you will never lose anything, and you're basically like Superman, invincible. And that's a very black and white thinking when it comes to how affirmations or how the universe works. Because they don't always say like, hey, haha, you have lost this or you got sick, so it, it can't work. If this thing would work, if affirmations would work, if manifestation would work, you would never be sick. But I rather think it's more that you can increase the likelihood that you attract the right things. You will get better and better at it over time, of course. And that you can also deal with things differently. Because in the past, when I had a minor health issue, it was the end of the world for me. I was going completely crazy, completely like, oh my God, why so much suffering? I suffer all the time. Why do I have to suffer so much? And now when I have it, I'm like, hmm, okay, what does the universe want to tell me? And then I listen to myself, I listen to the guidance of the universe, and then 
I find healing very, very fast. Yeah, I would agree. I've seen people who are like that too. Like anybody who is in this field of spirituality and the law of attraction, they almost feel like they've done something wrong if they get sick or if their relationship breaks up. And I'm like, I don't think that working in spirituality insulates you from having experiences in life that may feel positive or negative. But I think like you said, it gives you a tool to process what's happening and to hopefully create different outcomes. And like, I'm also open to like, if I were sick and I was focusing in on just really being present with what's happening and being okay with that. And obviously I'm going to be visualizing good outcomes as well, but I've worked with some people who were very sick and I felt that they had a huge healing around it and yet they passed away. You know, they didn't necessarily always physically survive the illness And that, for me, that comes down to the fact that I believe that there's so much more to life than we can see. And I'm a believer that we live after death. And I personally believe in reincarnation. I don't think anybody needs to believe that to work with these practices. But sometimes you kind of have to give yourself grace and realize that we get to control part of what happens, but there's still some mystery in life. And even though things happen that aren't always exactly what we wanted, we can still use these spiritual tools to go through them with grace and getting positive aspects from them, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's true. And I actually also believe in the same that you believe in. I also believe that there is, yeah, that there is reincarnation, that there is something more after death. And Yeah, let's say it like this. I mean, sometimes you don't know if that was their path of least resistance. And when it comes to minor sicknesses, I would say, to give you an example from my own life, I had inflammation in my body and I had to take a lot of supplements and change my diet because I was basically eating like shit for years. And (laughs) I'm very thankful that I had this. I mean, now I can say I'm very thankful because I found out through blood tests and everything that I had this inflammation. Now I'm eating healthy. Because what do you prefer? Do you prefer now to have this inflammation in your body where you maybe go first in the first knee-jerk reaction, like, oh, why do I have this now? Oh, this sucks. But then later you think, okay, i rather have this now, change my diet, instead of continuing to eat like crap for the next 20 years and then get the diagnosis, for example, cancer or heart attack or whatever it might be. So I'm rather having to deal with this minor issue now. That is how I believe my path of least resistance so that I can then prevent bigger things from happening in the future. Yeah, I think that's very true to these little things that come up when we pay attention. I think Abraham Hicks actually says, like, whenever you have something that happens, if you can pay attention and fix it and change course, then things are likely to go your way. But if you don't change the course, then the universe is going to get louder and louder and louder, making the problem worse and worse and worse till it gets your attention. Exactly. And that's basically how it was all my life with a lot of things. And at some point, the universe was screaming at me so loud and I was like, okay, I'm deaf to it. Who cares? (laughs) And that happened over and over again. But nowadays I'm like, okay, first thing happens. It's not that I go crazy and go in complete panic mode, like, oh my God. It's more like I'm cool with it. What does it tell me? Why do I have it right now? What does the universe want to tell me? And then things magically happen. Mm, Lovely. Yeah, I think when we get curious about the why instead of like react and afraid, then we can make those changes a lot easier. Exactly, yeah. So we're almost out of time. I don't know, is there another story that you want to share or a tip that you want to give before we get ready to wrap up? Mm, I would say one of the main tips that I would recommend is to just try it out. Maybe even if somebody's listening here and who also had a lot of struggle in the past and who also is, maybe even is very, very much in this mood of like, yeah, maybe it works, but probably not. Uh, I don't know. Uh, If you're in this mood, take me as an example. I didn't believe in it for years. I was still 
yeah, I was believing almost till a couple of months ago that this is all one big hoax, <laughs> but now I'm a firm believer in it. And just give it a shot. I mean, when I watch these Abraham Hicks videos, I just wrote down just wrote down some affirmations and I was just trying it. I was dancing around a little bit and I felt silly. I felt completely weird. I'm like, Jesus, if somebody sees me here, he will put me in the nut house. But I was just <laughs> giving it a shot. I was just trying it. And I'm like, okay, this is actually fun. This raises my vibration. Let's just see what happens. You have nothing to lose. I mean, <laughs> you really have nothing to lose. If you just try it out, it takes a couple of minutes in the morning and you feel better. So there's nothing to lose. Very good advice. And we're going to send links to your podcast so that people can go and check that out. Are there any other resources you have? I know you said you love Abraham Hicks. Is there mm -hmm. anything else that you would recommend to people getting started? I think for now, one of the best parts is, of course, to get started with my Affirmation to Manifestation podcast that you can find on iTunes. But I would also say if you are a little bit like me, then get started with Abraham Hicks. I know it might be a little bit a hard pill to swallow for the beginning, but for me, it was the perfect entry. Very nice. So we're going to send everybody in the show notes links to your podcast. You want to tell a little bit about your podcast too before we go? And yeah, sure. I decided to call it Affirmation to Manifestation because that was actually my process. <laughs> like I started by just writing some affirmations. I didn't really believe in it. And then these affirmations actually led eventually on this path where I actively manifested things. And for now in my podcast, I focus a lot on answering questions about the law of attraction, answering questions about how to manifest things. And I also share my own manifestation stories, my own success stories, and my own experiences with my audience. And yeah, if you want to check it out, you can find it on iTunes. I would love to have you as a listener. Awesome. So I'm going to put that in the show notes for everybody. And I thank you so much, Sebastian, for taking the time to meet up with me and share with my audience some of your amazing stories, because I find it very inspiring. You know, I've been on a spiritual path for a long time. <laughs> and so I was one of those ones who started as a child, but I always find it really inspiring when someone starts a little bit later in life, like you did, and they just take off running with it because that lets everybody know that you don't have to have done this for 30 years in order to see results. You can see results really, really fast. Yep. It can go very, very fast. And yeah, thank you so much again for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And thank you for all your inspiring stories and we'll be sending everybody over to check out your Affirmation to Manifestation podcast. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you so much.